Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Barnome hoy ma shamele zabon hoy besiorist. Az in website didan farmoid suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. I'm also pleased to see you and can be of some service by reminding you of the good ways to practice. I'm also very pleased. But I'm more pleased if you put them into practice. You know, the ancient wisdom. You read, you heard about it, but you must practice. Please keep watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic, Alexis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. Mendeft means hello in Kalmyk, kindest greetings, distinguished viewers. My name is Adyan. The sincere people of Kalmykia adore your inner beauty. Kalmykia Republic is located in southwestern Russia and lies northwest of the Caspian Sea and west of the Lower Volga River. Despite being in Europe, Kalmykia is the only European region where the most practiced religion is Buddhism. Its capital city, Alista, is the main attraction of the land and impresses with its unusual Buddhist flavor and amazing buildings. Even though Alista has a relatively small population of around 100,000, there are a surprising number of very interesting and unique things to see and do here. Some outstanding examples of this are the many stunning Buddhist temples, one of which is the Golden Abode of Shakyamuni Buddha, the largest Buddhist temple in Europe. As well, there is the Kalmyk Steppe, where one can experience the Mongol heritage of the Kalmyks through traditional throat singing and dance. And there is more. The unique and immaculate chess city built in 1998 for the World Chess Olympiad to house visiting competitors and the state of the art chess school is surely one of a kind. And last but certainly not least is the huge chess set in the main town square, which is quite popular. More than half of the people of Kalmykia practice Buddhism, which for them is a way of life and is a part of the culture. They believe that happiness is the meaning and the purpose of life, which every sentient being, believer or non-believer alike, hopes to attain. We are elated to briefly introduce Wondrous Kalmykia to you, enlightened viewers. We wish you to be always immersed in divine love and celestial bliss. For our three decades, Supreme Master Qinghai has illuminated our world with her divine teachings. A fully enlightened master, she imparts the Kuan Yin method of meditation 
to those desiring to immediately discover the God nature within and to achieve in one lifetime eternal liberation from the cycle of transmigration. The Kuan Yin method has been practiced by all enlightened masters, such as the worshipped world honored one Shakyamuni Buddha, the worshipped son of God Jesus Christ, the venerated master and philosopher Confucius, the venerated Lord Krishna, the venerated master and philosopher Lao Tzu, the venerated Lord Mahavira, the beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the first Sikh Guru Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, and many more. Supreme Master Ching Hai emphasizes that if we always remember God, render selfless service to others, and follow the laws of the universe, we will reach our highest potential as humans and truly understand our purpose on earth. She is an extraordinary living example of compassion, regularly sending material and financial assistance, as well as love to refugees, the homeless, natural disaster victims and others needing relief. Supreme Master Ching Hai is deeply grateful to the beloved God for all the financial help, comfort and support to the afflicted and needy and or any good cause over the years as a humble vessel for his compassion and love toward his precious children. Supreme Master Ching Hai respectfully thank all special individuals, organizations, leaders and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. May heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness, wishing you the best. Supreme Master Ching Hai receives love and recognition from various organizations, media governments, and individuals, as well as many awards from them, such as the 2006 Gusi Peace Prize, considered the Nobel Peace Prize of the East, the World Spiritual Leadership Award in 1994, the Mahavir Award in 2008, February 22nd and October 25th, both proclaimed as the Supreme Master Ching Hai Day, an honorary citizen of the United States, etc., and has been honored throughout the years with numerous other awards and accolades for her outstanding philanthropic and humanitarian deeds.
etc. We apologize for not being able to show many other awards and honors for lack of space and time. Supreme Master Qinghai respectfully thank all special individuals, organizations, leaders and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. May heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Qinghai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness, wishing you the best. A true voice for our beautiful animal friends, Supreme Master Qinghai promotes the peaceful and loving plant-based diet and envisions with humanity's awakening to the sacredness of all life, a tranquil and glorious all-vegan world where animals and people live in blissful harmony. Her initiatives to spread the vegan trend are diverse and have included alternative living flyer distribution, the international vegan restaurants Loving Hut, vegan food product companies, vegan food products, Supreme Master Television, as well as regularly speaking to influential government and media leaders and participating in televised conferences on climate change, etc. Whether we are aware of it or not, her efforts have had an enormous influence on global awareness of the animal-friendly lifestyle and how this benevolent way can bring lasting peace among nations while saving our planet from climate change and disasters. Over the years, Supreme Master Qinghai has traveled worldwide, from the Americas to Africa, from Europe to Oceania, and held hundreds of discourses with the public and her disciples on a variety of spiritual topics. Today, we are blessed to present one of these insightful lectures entitled Buddhist Stories, Patika the Naked Ascetic, Part 3 of 4, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on September 19, 2015 in France. So the boy listened to the instructions of the naked ascetic and then went to the Buddha and delivered the invitation. When he had done everything according to the instructions of the naked ascetic, he returned to the later, and he returned to the naked ascetic again. This man is really naked. He is naked of all spiritual understanding and enlightenment. That's why he could do such a thing and say such a thing, yeah, and delude such a young boy in such a way. I think, yeah, it's not written in the book, <laughs> but I couldn't help to have a few words. <laughs> My big mouth couldn't, <laughs> couldn't help. <laughs> uh, I should not criticize, right? Yeah, judge not, so you not be judged. Oh no, maybe one day I have to become naked ascetic according to <laughs> my, my uh, criticism today. Nah. In case it happened, please just cover your eyes. <laughs> not because I'm embarrassed, but because there's nothing for you to see. <laughs> nothing worth to, to see anymore at my age. <laughs> so the, the, the naked ascetic asked the boy when he came back to him, said, what did you do? Said the boy, I did everything that you told me to do, noble sir, noble. Mm, very indeed. You have done very well, my boy. We now shall both of us eat the good things I prepare for him. Meaning after the, Bu the Buddha will not be able to find the, the house anyway, so both of them will enjoy all the food that the Buddha will not eat. Yeah. Yeah. On the following day, every, very early in the morning, the naked ascetic went to that house, house of the mother, yeah? Mm. Taking the boy with him, and the two sat down together in the back room. The neighbor smeared that house with cow dung, 
decked it with five kinds of flowers, including the larger flower, and prepare a seat of great price that the teacher, meaning the Buddha, might sit therein. In India, the cow dungs are very valuable. When it's fresh, they smear it around the house. It's like you paint your house. Understand? That means newly painted. At that time, probably, they don't have paint yet. The cow dungs will, um, will uh, minimize or eliminate the insects that come into that house. Understand? It's somehow like that. They smear it all over, inside and outside, and the insect will not come into that house. Not every house nowadays smear with cow dung, but there are still many houses like that. I have seen, okay? Otherwise, they use mud, you know, in like a Himalaya. Mostly you don't find any house with uh, stone paved, and, you know, or bricks like that. Small houses for practitioners are made with mud, truly mud, no painting, nothing. And there are holes here and there for the scorpion to come in to visit, you know, free of charge. <laughs> I lived in such a house, in such... Yeah, there's several houses like that. Scorpion, centipede, yeah, snake. Sometimes they came in, say hello, and then they came out. Mm. Or sometimes the scorpion lazy, don't go. I have to put him in a jar <laughs> and accompany him to big stones outside somewhere in the forest. Luckily, they liked me. <laughs> not in such a way, but <laughs> not to go too near, you know. They liked me, but they didn't do much. Now I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking of that time. I'm thinking I wasn't like an iron woman, you know, walking in the dark forest and not fear. And now I fear. <laughs> walking in the dark at night to go home with no light, no electric, no flashlight even. Couldn't afford. And to even live with scorpion and centipedes all over like that. Yeah. I must have been blind. Love makes blind. No. <laughs> love for God. <laughs> God. Love to God also makes me blind. Now if you invite me to India, give me a million dollars, I say, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm ascetic now. <laughs> I don't need money. <laughs> All right. So the neighbors, mean the, the neighbors help to smear the house with cow dung. It's a sign of respect, okay, at that time. For for village people, for some rural area people, they still do that. They still do that. I sat in some of these houses also before. I didn't rent any of these houses, but I, I rent. I just rent whatever house you know room available, and mostly made by mud, not with cow dungs. Yeah. But I I've seen these houses and I've sat in many of them. Yeah. It doesn't smell anything. It doesn't smell at all. It's funny. After it dry, probably when it's wet you might smell it, but after it dry it doesn't smell at all. Yeah. Uh, the cow dung in India, they, they make it into a round, like a chapati flat, and then they, they, they uh, put it on the wall to dry. Uh, also, by the way, you know, keep it warm in the house. And if they need to use it, they take it down, mix it with water again to the liquid, and then smear the house with it. Yeah? Okay? But you would think this is funny, strange, why you smear dung on your house. But it's like that. Sometimes they even prepare a, a big platform in a former life, and they smear the cow dung on it, and invite some master to sit there to, to talk, you know, to do lecture. People, this is a, um, in parentheses, they say, people who are not familiar with the Buddhas, know nothing about the uh, preparation of a seat for them, nor do the Buddhas ever need a guide to direct them on their way. For on the day of enlightenment, when they sit under the Bodhi tree, causing ten thousand words to quake, all paths become plain to them. To point, <laughs> this path leads to hell, this path leads to the world of beasts, this path leads to the world of ghosts, this path leads to the world of humans, this path leads to the world of the gods, Le this path 
leads to the deathless to reach nirvana. Meaning, all the Buddha when they became enlightened, mostly they only sat under the tree or somewhere. Yeah, they don't even need any high seat or any decorated days or anything. But they know everything at that time. Which way is the best way for us to go for liberation? Understand? Mm. Yes, it means like that. Okay. There is never any need of telling them the way to villages, market towns, or other places. <laughs> now you know. The Buddha probably just know where it is. <laughs> he could ask, right? Yeah. In any way, therefore, the teacher, meaning the Buddha, very early in the morning took bow and rope and went straight to the house of the great female lay disciple. She came forth from the house, respectfully bowed down to the Buddha, escorted him into the house, poured water of donation into his right hand, and gave him the choices of food. Water, just to wash hands, huh? pour it in the hand to wash. Yeah. And then sometimes they bring, bring also water for the Buddha to wash the feet, because the Buddha always walk with barefoot, barefooted. In some monastery nowadays, uh, it, it, there is still tradition like that. In Thailand, even, for example, outside of the monastery, they always have a tray, you know, a flat uh, basin put in front of the door, or maybe they built it in, and always the water. So when the monks went outside, or back in, or come back from some errand, some mission, they wash their feet there before they enter the hall. Uh, they are dwelling place, or, or the meditation hall, or Buddha's hall. All right, so, and gave him the choices of food, food both hard and soft. <laughs> when the teacher, <laughs> just like here, you have uh, soup <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and uh, I would say, hard protein, huh? yeah. and rice, and salad. When the teacher had finished his meal, meal the female lay disciple desiring, desiring to have him pronounce words of thanksgiving, took his bow, and the teacher, with his own sweet voice, began the address of rejoicing. When uh, he finished, it doesn't mean she take it away, she probably took it so that he has a room to talk, or it's a sign that the Buddha will be talking now. Uh, he finished the meal and took it. Yeah. And the teacher, with his own sweet voice, began the address of rejoicing. The lay disciple listened to the teaching of the Dharma and applauded the teacher, saying, Well said, well said. The naked ascetic, sitting there in the back room, heard the words of an applause uttered by the lay disciple as she heard the teacher teach the Dharma. Unable to control himself, he remarked, She is my disciple no longer. Quit. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> and he, he denounced her as his disciple and came out. And he said to the lay disciple, Ha! You are lost for applauding this man first. <laughs> and he revived both the female lay disciple and the teacher in all manner of ways and then ran off. I don't know where he's going. Who's going to make offering to him from now? The lay disciple was so embarrassed by the naked ascetic's insulting words that her mind became completely distraught, and she was unable to concentrate her attention on the teacher's discourse. Oof. The teacher asked her, Lay disciple, are you unable to fix your mind on my discourse? Probably initiation time, you know, you must listen t attentively. So she replied, Good and reverend sir, my mind is completely distraught by the insulting words of this naked ascetic. So the teacher said, One should not consider the talk of such a contrary person. One should pay no attention to such as he. One should regard only what one has committed and omitted to do. So saying, he pronounced the following stanza. Not the faults of others, nor what they did and did not, but in oneself should be sought things done and left undone. Okay, my own business. <laughs> Simple. Okay? 
don't care about what others is doing or not doing. Just mind your own business. Remember what you have to do or what you should not do. Okay? Finish the story. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record what the Buddha is teaching after the masters and nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks and nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. Imagine this, huh? So... Yeah, this is a possessiveness. It's not renunciation, huh? You see that? Hmm? Yes. <laughs> it's funny. It's like the voice, no? <laughs> the ascetic monk, the voice. <laughs> His substitute wife. <laughs> and run off, you know? Run back to his mother, <laughs> I guess. Hmm. Okay. So, any question about ascetism? Hmm? No? Yeah, there are many forms of ascetism. No? Ascetism inside is the best. Yeah. But of course, if you can avoid mixing with too much worldly energy and people, they would also help. No? But as the lay people, you cannot do always like that. So now and then you do a retreat, you know, either here or in your house or in some, some nice and quiet area for yourself. So clean off some of the influence of the world. It also helps. Eh? But true ascetism in the former ancient time, uh, sometimes in the Buddha's past reincarnation, he also did some ascetic practice. Like you go to the forest, you know, alone, or with one or two others same-minded, and then they would just eat uh, whatever the forest offer, yeah? roots or leaves. And some very, very good story. Yeah. I, had a, I had a book of good story, but I don't have it here. It's uh, far away, <laughs> too far, too far to go and get it. <laughs> I could ask people to come and ask it, but we have a lot of story here, so no need. no need. So in the old time, people, when they say they renounce the world, they do that. They go into the forest, you know, alone and just wearing like a coarse garment, like the, like the clothes that are made from bags, you know, rice bags and rough and, uh, you know, itchy, <laughs> whatever they can find. Mm. like cheesecloth, whatever people discard it on the street or in the garbage, and they would wash it and patch it together, and then they wear them, keep them warm, or keep just a blanket or something, and live in a hut in the forest. Maybe they built it by themselves, you know, using uh, fallen branches from the tree and some leaves or something to cover it. And then that's how they, they find their tranquility. They have less, but they gain more. They have less outside, but they gain more inside. Such story is very, very inspiring. Yeah. But not everyone can do that, huh? Yeah. It's uh, according to your destiny also. Yeah? It's, for me, it's sometimes difficult to do that, because I would think of you at home. You, know, you want to see me, and you want to me to sit with you and remind you of this and that. You know, just to want to see me. It feels like <laughs> sometimes an obligation. Yeah. Of course, I do love you, 
Not like I feel obliged and feel terrible about it. It's not like that. I'm also pleased to see you and can be of some service by reminding you of the good ways to practice. I'm also very pleased. But I'm more pleased if you put them into practice. You know, the ancient wisdom. You read, you heard about it, but you must practice. Then I'm be, I'll be very, very pleased. <laughs> More pleased than just to see you, and then you go home and go back to your old ways and forget what your ideal was in the beginning. Forget the noble aspiration of your life. Forget the goal, and just too busy, you know, every day with uh, survival. <laughs> I just hope sometimes you see me, and then you be more encouraged, you know, reminded, afreshed to start again. You know, if you fail. Before you, you begin again. Hmm? Does it help you sometimes? Yes. Does it see me? <laughs> okay, then it's good. Then it's good. Then it serves my purpose. Okay. Magnanimous viewers, we appreciate your company for today's episode entitled Buddhist Stories, Patikade Naked Ascetic, Part 3 of 4, on Between Master and Disciples. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. May your loving friendships enrich your lives and bring you abundant joy and happiness. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.